when I first heard about this movie, I didn't think it was about this guy. I thought it was about this guy. How silly of me. What is up everybody? Random Random Man here to bring you my review for Nightcrawler, which stars Jake Gyllenhaal, Rene Russo, Riz Ahmed, and Bill Paxton, and is directed by Dan Gilroy. Now the plot follows Louis Bloom, played by Jake Gyllenhaal, a driven young theft who is looking for a job, only to find the perfect one filming accidents and crimes and selling the footage to news channels. But once he starts getting really good at what he does, his actions start to take an effect on his complicated mind. Now I have finally, finally seen this movie, as a whole bunch of other people have already praised this movie beyond belief, and I didn't initially buy into all the hype. But since my last couple of reviews have been a matter of me playing catch up to whatever I missed the first time around in theaters, I thought might as well give Nightcrawler a try, as once again it's been getting a lot of praise from critics and audiences, and it did look like a somewhat interesting concept with Jake Gyllenhaal going crazy over what he does. But is this movie worth all the attention it's getting? Let's run down the whole thing. Alright, let's get this out of the way. Jake Gyllenhaal is just absolutely phenomenal in this movie. Now in preparation for playing this guy, he lost 30 pounds, and while the weight is noticeable on him, that's not the main factor that attracted me about his character. His character is so chillingly likable that you can't just help but feel to root for him while he's going after what he does, as what he's essentially doing is illegal, and plus, his personality is just very grim and dark. I mean, he's a jerk. He's a total asshole. And I think that this is one of the best performances he's ever given. Certainly the best since Donnie Darko. And I thought he was pretty creepy in that role there. And he definitely deserves all the praise he is getting this upcoming award season and then some. As I think that Hall is the best part of this movie. The rest of the supporting cast here are also stellar additions. Rene Russo, who, fun fact, is actually married to the director of this movie, Dan Gilroy, plays the director of a morning news channel, and she actually buys all the footage that Hall is actually filming on the scenes, and she gives such a nuanced performance in this film that it's just refreshing to see her back in the limelight, as she has been out of uh, relevancy for quite a while now, and that's what I really like to see from actors working today. Riz Ahmed plays Hall's assistant who actually goes along with whatever he's doing in making money off of the news footage, and he gives a sense of nervousness and naivety towards how his character is played up in the film that I think that I'll be on the lookout for him in the future for other roles, as I think that this is going to be a breakout role for him. And finally, we have Bill Paxton playing the rival of sorts of Gyllenhaal's character. In fact, he is why Gyllenhaal is going after Nightcrawling, if you will, and why the profession is so successful for him. And I think that Paxton is also a jerk in this movie too. Pretty much a lot of people here are just unlikable. But then again, you just can't help but like to see these characters go at it on screen because of the environment that this movie presents itself. And from that, I will say that the cast here are very nice and very cool to see on screen, especially since this is a smaller type of movie. But then again, it does feel bigger on scale with all the characters here. This is actually Dan Gilroy's directorial debut here, as well as writing the screenplay, and I think he does such a fantastic job in what he wants to portray on screen. The streets of LA look so gritty and grueling to watch, as I think they haven't looked this good since Drive back in 2011, and the way he writes characters' dialogue and how the actions are supposed to be played up for the camera makes the movie so attractive in how it displays its characters, and just like a bad car accident, which does happen a lot in this movie, you can't just help but turn your eyes away from the screen even though what you're looking at is disturbing in comparison. And I think that this makes this movie a lot more entertaining than it should be even though the concept is way out there, but it also makes it a lot more engaging to watch. What do I mean by this? Well, in scenes that are only just filled with dialogue, 
it is just so entertaining to watch these characters go at it with one another, especially with Gyllenhaal and his chilling performance, as he is just very quick-witted and knows what to say in any given situation, and I think that it's a credit towards the actor's phenomenal performance once again. And even then, other characters are given dialogue that are just very realistic to work with, as this movie also gives insight in how the news industry works, and it also makes this movie similarly enough towards Gone Girl. Girl. Not just for the fact that both movies are dark and disturbing, but also because they portray the news media in a very different perspective in how one of them is played up for satirization, while this one is played up for a realistic sense. And that's what I think this movie and Gone Girl, once again, do very well. The action scenes that are also presented here are so riveting to watch. Granted, there is not a lot of action that is shown in this movie, but the stuff that does pop up here makes the movie all the more thrilling. From scenes where Gyllenhaal and his partner are trying to rush to a scene of a crime or an accident in order to get the perfect shot, or when crimes are in progress and Gyllenhaal is actually rushing to safety or to get more shots once again. And this also comes into play towards the end of the movie. And not only is it some of the more nail-biting sequences that I've seen, not only throughout, but also in any movie this year. But I think the ending will not only leave a bunch of people going like this. But also like this. What? The fuck? That's how engrossing this movie is. All of this comes together in a package that is just a satisfying movie onto itself. The problems that I do have with this movie are so few and far between that I don't think there are any major problems except for maybe one, but I can consider it minor in its acceptance, but I will mention it anyway. It seems like Gyllenhaal's character got out of situations a little too smoothly for his sly character. And while it did somewhat take me out of the movie at times, it really wasn't enough for me to go, oh, that was a major problem with the movie. This movie sucks now. As I think that what this movie does is already fantastic in its own right. My final thoughts on this movie are that the acting here is top notch, especially from Gyllenhaal's Oscar worthy performance. The writing here is just so smart and clever in how LA is portrayed and dialogue is spewed out left and right. And once again, the action makes the movie all the more absorbing to an average viewer. I think that this is one of my favorite movies of the year. It's certainly one of the best in my opinion. I love this movie. I don't know how much more I can praise it other than the fact that you should go see it if you haven't already. My final verdict for Nightcrawler is four and a half out of five stars. One final note before I end this video. This may or may not be my final movie review of the year, as I'm still contemplating whether I should see more to end the year on the right note, as I am in preparation on a video highlighting my favorite movies of 2014, and I think it's going to be my most ambitious project yet, and I look forward to sharing it with you all once I am finished. Thank you all, as always, for watching. Be sure to like this video, comment on what you thought of Nightcrawler, subscribe to my channel for more, and I'll catch you on the next movie review.